So seriously, dude, what are you pointing at? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Oh, you're, you're playing football. You want me to go long? No problem. But before I do, I need a drink. From the coldest water bottle. That's right. This water bottle keeps things cold for 36 to 100 hours. There's no perspiration on the outside and it comes in all shapes, colors, and sizes. It can even protect you from COVID. Okay, that's not true, but you can pick one up today, use the code EXTREME, and check out the link in the description below. If you don't wanna pay for one, try and win one by clicking on the link below. Come on, you know you wanna buy one. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey guys, very excited here. We are bringing you Prime One Studios, Hank Henshaw, or Zarel, Cyborg Superman. I'm going to explain what all that means. So if you're unfamiliar with who this character is, this is not Superman. This is not Clark Kent or Kal-El or any of the names he goes by has a very interesting background. But this is a statue by a company called Prime One Studios. It's one third scale. We're gonna unpack all of that in a review today. But before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about this character and why I purchased this piece. So as I said, there's actually two different versions of Cyborg Superman in the comics. And this statue actually pays homage to both of them. For the most part, it's paying homage to Hank Henshaw. And if you're into DC Comics, that name should be a little bit familiar. Anyway, long story short, Hank Henshaw and his wife kind of went through a Fantastic Four transformation. Yeah, that's right. DC ripped it off a little bit from the Fantastic Four. They're in space with the solar flare. Hank Henshaw ended up having some problems and his skin melted off. And he replaced everything with android parts. He went to like Superman's birthstone or something of that nature and he got all of his DNA. And then he came back to Earth right after Doomsday killed Superman. He pretended to be Superman, and he said these were all my damaged parts from the fight. And then eventually, as you know, Superman came back, and then he became an evil bad guy. So that's one version. The other version is this is actually Zor-El, so someone from the planet Krypton. Now they have a little bit different powers, and the Hank Henshaw version that most of this statue encompasses is actually a lot more powerful. So essentially, he has the powers of Superman, for the most part, most of his powers, and not specifically the character cyborg, but because he's a cybernetic organism, not related to T-800 or the Terminator, but because he has those cybernetic components, he can pretty much do the things that Cyborg from DC Comics or the Justice League can do as well. Now, the zor version isn't quite as strong, but essentially he can do some wicked stuff with his right arm, hence you see the awesome, let me get some, switch out exclusive that we're gonna look at because this is the exclusive piece. So as I said, this is made by Prime One Studios and I purchased this because I own a number of Prime One Studios one third scale DC pieces. This is actually gonna go right below one of their biggest pieces ever, this doomsday right here, which is under scale for a one third scale piece. But I wanna kinda of put these villains next to each other because another villain right in that display is Prime One Studios General Zod that I've done a review on right here. Let's jump into the review of this guy, and I'm going to let you know right off the bat, there are some things I love and some things I'm actually really disappointed with, and I'm kind of like, shame on you, Prime One Studios. But first thing we're going to kick it off with is concept. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Cyborg Superman. I think they made him out to be a little bit more of a wuss in the comics than he should have been, and he kept coming back over and over, and I haven't even read all the different storylines. And also, for the record, I have no idea why I keep moving my hands around like this today. So as I said, we're gonna start with the concept, so let's check that out. Now on the base, they do what Prime One Studios does with most of their pieces, is they have a sub base. Now this sub base has a lot of different aspects to it. It reminds me of maybe Superman or Kal-El's original ship, maybe the planet Krypton. There are some Superman-like symbols on the side of it and these huge pillars kind of jutting out, which also flow into the regular part of the base where you have this giant rock and then you, these spikes, almost like crystal metal spikes, really reminds me of the Fortress of Solitude. However, they've been androided or cyborged. So very, very different. Superman is in a really, in my opinion, one of the reasons I almost didn't buy this stupid pose. 
I'm not a huge fan of this pose. It has grown on me a little bit, and it almost gives you the effect that he's flying, but not really. It's nothing like their big Prime One Studios Hush Superman. You can check out my review on that as well. But there you see Superman. You see half of his body suited like Superman because he did take Superman's DNA. You see the parts of the cyborg. Very Terminator 2 reminiscent of where you see part man, part machine. He has a fabric or what we call mixed media cape. He has a number of different switch outs we're going to look at, especially like I said, because this is the exclusive version. And on his right hand, he's kind of holding up a lot of power. In his left arm, this is one thing I absolutely hated about the statue. He's pointing off into the sunset. And you can still switch out his hand here, but I hated this. And we'll talk more about that in a second. However, then you see his portrait. Now, you have two different portrait options. They both show half of the human face and half of the cyborg face. I just think it looks badass. This one right here is actually the exclusive, and his mouth is closed, and the top half is skin. I might like the other one a little bit better, but I'm digging this one as well. For me, I think the pose ties a lot into the concept. There's some design stuff, and that's really where I'm kind of disappointed in Prime One Studios. We'll talk about that in a second. But the pose leaves a lot to be desired because of just the weird way he's standing. You don't really have a true flying effect. I'm not a big fan of that arm pointing out. They could have done maybe a switch out arm because to me, it's just really, really strange. So I think the concept's still really cool because he's such a different character, but I'm only gonna give it a three out of five. Now, with that being said, I don't even know what the score of the design is going to be, but there are some significant issues with the design of this piece. First, let's look at the unboxing and assembly. Two giant, extremely heavy boxes. You can see some other Prime One Studios that arrived today. Here's the art box, pretty cool. Your standard Prime One Studios white foam that gets everywhere. So this first box here was the base. It was extremely heavy. Every part of the statue is heavy. The second box had three layers. The cape was on the underside here. Here is the first layer. It was just a whole bunch of pieces, essentially. And then here was the second layer with the body and a whole bunch of other pieces. Now, I did have some breakages. One of them you're going to see during the assembly, and one of them is the spit curl right here. So a few things during that if you didn't catch it. One, I did have some broken pieces. Not only the hair, but when I was inserting one of these pieces on this arm, it broke off as well. 
Also, the size of this. This statue probably weighs easy 60 to 80 pounds when it's all together. I kind of dread moving this over to the collection. If you want to see what it looks like in the collection, make sure to check out the Extreme Channel Instagram, Facebook page, and TikTok. But let's see how big this actually is. That's what she said. <laughs> so the deepest point is probably about 25 inches or so. And the widest point of the base is very similar, maybe 24 and a half. But as you see, these spikes kind of give you a little bit more on the left and right, kind of hard to determine. Then if we look at the height of this piece, we are over 36 inches for the fingers. So this is gonna take up a lot of room. And I think a lot of this is unnecessary. So first of all, the large sub base right here combined with another large base on top of it just gives it way too much height in my opinion. Second of all, the widest point of this, they could have cut a lot of this out. You know, I always talk about as statue collectors, space is one of our biggest enemy besides our spouses. Another thing I'm not a fan of, I don't like mixed media capes. I don't, I especially don't like them with wires. This one is very hard to pose and I'm, I've never really been a good poser. I actually like mixed media capes more when they just go straight down. Also, we talked a little bit about the concept, but just his pose in general just really, really bothers me. And I think part of that, you can put it with the design. Now, one thing it does have going for it, I think, are the switch outs. So let's look at those. So first, on the right arm, you have three switch outs, three, cy three cybernetic switch outs. The first one, he has a closed fist. This one, to me, is going back in the box. I will never use it. The next one is, he actually has five Green Lantern rings on. And if you're wondering where that comes from, this guy is such a badass. He actually had multiple Lantern rings. Not only the Green Lantern ones like you saw, but some of the Sinistro core. If you want to know more about Sinistro, check out this custom statue I recently reviewed. Now those are the regular version of the statue. The exclusive, which is what I bought, comes with this additional robotic arm. And as I said in the beginning, this is actually representing the Zarel version of this character, not the traditional Hank Henshaw, which most of the rest of this covers. So if you're a purist and you absolutely hate that, that this is kind of a statue of Hank Henshaw, but he has an arm that Zarel would have, you would hate this. But to me, I don't lose sleep over it. On his left arm, it's sticking straight out no matter what, but you can either do him pointing or him reaching out with a hand. I think I'm going to go with the hand. Another issue you may have noticed during assembly, the right cybernetic arm when you actually key it in it doesn't key in very well it's either too loose or too tight depending which switch out you use there are two different portraits the first one right here with his mouth wide open this right here is the regular version however i'm also a fan of the exclusive so this one right here only comes with the exclusive i think it's pretty badass as well and both of them actually have a light up feature now, while the cape is removable, you have to display it, otherwise you have these two nasty keyholes. So I love the switch outs, but regarding the design of the statue, that's about all I love. Another thing too, the cape, as I said, not only is it difficult just in general because it's mixed media with some uh, posable wires, it's a pain in the ass if you didn't catch that in the unboxing. So I hate to say it, but I think Prime 1 missed the ball with the design. I love Prime One Studios. I think they're probably the best licensed company out there, but I'm going to give it a two out of five on this design. Too many things went wrong with such an expensive statue. Now, thankfully, where Prime One Studios almost never misses is with the paint and sculpt, and I think it's pretty decent here. Let's take a look with close-up video. So let's start with the two portraits here. This is the exclusive version. I love the uh, skin tones. It's a little bit darker, but it almost looks like it's piecemealed skin put together, and I think that that adds to the effect. And then the Android parts, you can see the jawline, the teeth, I think that's pretty cool. Like I said, very Terminator reminiscent, but I still like it. I, not, I like how they have the spit curl, but it's a little bit different, the hair going in the back. I don't know if you saw during the assembly, but that uh, spit curl is actually a different piece, but it flows in really well. His costume looks fantastic. I think they did a great job with the anatomy. He's not over muscularized like he never has a donut, but he's still very, very uh, uh, tough. They have uh, some good shading in between where the muscles are. 
the way the costumes design together, I like the seams, not your typical Superman uh, costume. You know, since he was constructed of an android, I thought he would have made himself bigger junk, but he didn't. I like the shine on the belt and the Superman symbol. A little bit different than your traditional Superman. Again, great skin tone on the few pieces of skin you can see. And let's look at his other portrait really quick. Like I said, I love the screaming one. I don't think this is necessarily an exclusive or bust. I think you can definitely display it with this portrait right here and then the Green Lantern rings. Initially, I was thinking exclusive or bust, but I just love so much detail in this. The sculpt's done pretty well. I like the color they used on the skin and the cyborg, the hair. There's even a, a hint of blue in some of those strands. Moving back to soups here, cyborg soups. So the cape, like I said, not a huge fan of the cape. Uh, mainly, you know, too wrinkly, too hard to pose. The posable wires are pretty sturdy in this. To me, almost a little over sturdy. But even as machine parts right here, I like the wires running underneath it. I still have some packaging in here, obviously. That's embarrassing. His toe looks a little strange. So if you're kind of a, you know, into cyborg feet, I don't know if that's something that you would dig or not, but still even the, the gears and the inner workings there, pretty neat. So his shoes have this uh, textured pattern on it, this, this small texture, and it's not the shine that the other red is, and I kind of appreciate it. I think it does a good transition down below here. And then last, let's look at up here before we move to the base. Again, just so much detail that they have sculpted in here. Looks great. Even these fingers, fantastic job by Prime One Studios. And then looking at the base here, so the rocks look fine. They, they don't look great, they don't look bad. Um, they do look like real locks, lock, ugh. You can tell I'm trying to film this pretty quickly for you guys, so I do apologize at some of these uh, mistakes here. And if you don't like them, I'm sure your mom's upstairs. But uh, there is a little bit of a plastic effect at certain angles with a lot of light on it, but for the most part, I think it looks really good. I think they could have used maybe a little bit more, um, maybe browns in there, but I think it adds to the evil of the statue because this is a pretty evil dude in the DC universe. These, uh, what I call the Fortress of Solitude spikes look good. As you saw me assemble it, this, is, this one in the back especially is almost like a, a miniature sword. I think it's just enough detail in there where uh, when you're looking at the statue, it's like, oh, that's a cool addition, and then you move on. And then the base down below, it's interesting, these spikes on the front are quite a bit bigger than anywhere else. And like I said, it's a, it's a Superman-like symbol on the sides here, kind of a, a reverse indentation. And on the front, they have the true Superman symbol. And I think the coloring on this is nice. It's nowhere as good as what uh, the figure itself is but it's got kind of this faded look. I think if they went with all shine, it would have looked out of place and it would have taken away from some of the cyborg parts of Superman. And again, it takes away from the value of that, or the, the concept that this is a pretty evil dude. So overall, some pros and cons, but I think uh, Prime One overall did a great job. Starting with the paint, I like Superman. I think he pops well. I like the colors they chose for the cyborg. It's not too shiny, it's not too dull. Base, a lot left to be desired like we look, like we talked about. I think the base is average. I think Superman's uh, above average. And Superman is what you go to. Cyborg Superman is what you go to. So I say it's a four out of five on the paint. Now, the sculpt I think is much better. I'm a big, big fan of the sculpt. Just like the paint, Cyborg Superman is better than the base. But I'd give the base an even higher rating with paint and then Superman. I think for me, I can give this a 5 out of 5 on the sculpt. Uh, it's not quite perfect. There's definitely the things we talked about that could have been improved, but they did a very, very nice job. Now the question is, is this worth all the money I paid? So originally, I ordered this from Sideshow Collectibles. 
But the more I looked at it, I decided, you know, I'm really not digging that pose. And then he had delay after delay, so I canceled him. And then I saw a few in-hand pictures from overseas about a month ago. So I really wanted the exclusive. I kind of felt like it was an exclusive or bust. So I went to Prime One Studios and I actually bought the exclusive, which shipping was quite a bit more. I want to say I paid two or $300 for the slow shipping, the economy shipping. And I was also back on the wait list at Sideshow. So I purchased him and then about a few weeks later, I got the shipping notification. They charged me the full balance. Same day my Sideshow wait list actually converted ironically. But so I canceled that and went ahead with this guy. For value, I think that he takes up a lot of space. I understand the shipping charges with those two huge boxes and the weight. And they made 1,100 of these, which isn't that many for a DC one third piece. But again, he's kind of a secondary character. 500 were the exclusive, the one I got, and then 600 didn't have that additional portrait and arm that I'm showing here. He retailed right around $1,200 which is about your growing rate for a one-third. Although as we've seen recently, Prime One Studios is now pushing 1,500 to 2,500 for one-third pieces. So I think if recent prices weren't as high as they were, I would probably give them a three out of five on value. But because I know the prices are skyrocketing for multiple reasons, I think he's actually a four out of five on value. I think the value is pretty decent on this piece because it is pretty cool despite a lot of the flaws. Now does this have the X factor? That's my Final score, like when I look at this piece, is it kind of badass? Does it draw your attention? Does someone want to go look at it? Well, I think they kind of do, not only because it's so big and it really grabs your attention with just its its magnificent look and presence, but it's so different. They're like, is that Terminator? Is that Superman? So I think that while it doesn't have the X Factor 5 out of 5, it's still pretty damn cool at a 4 out of 5, and I have zero regrets on buying it. But let me know what you think about this guy in the comments below. Uh, do you agree with my comments? Am I totally wrong? Are you going to buy a water bottle? Go ahead and throw that down below because it might just win you a statue. We will be giving all of these statues away plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. I have a ton of stuff arriving, so make sure you've subscribed to that channel. You can hit that picture of me below to do it. But I have tons of stuff like this. I think I have like 17 things in transit right now. So make sure you catch those. If you could drop me a like on the way out, I'd really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Take care.